to test fit those intercoolers on the Swift because it's going to roll. Yep. I honestly think it was about time, even though I like the uniqueness of the centrifugal supercharger he used to have on the car, but it had more problems than stable working hours, so that's a good look. Now to Gergic, I haven't told him I'll come to be filming, but I think he's gonna be fine with that. Probably got tired of this noise one day, but that day is not today. Well, that's not a supercharger. That's a place of a supercharger. So, uh, as you can tell, we need a distancing plate um, and some witchcraft to make it work. But it seems like the Sonic intercooler is going to be the one to be fitted roughly like so. Like that. This neck needs to be turned around and then the turbo can go straight into there and that can go straight back into the engine. Good. You should see I think around 250 horsepower. Apparently, uh, according to Garrett, the clutch will be the weak point, which is not exactly a big problem. It's better than breaking the transmission. So, yeah. Looks pretty good. I went to open up the boot on the Cynic again and uh, it's not opening again. And why you cannot tell on camera? The screen is acting up as well. There are basically three icons that are bright and all of the other stuff is maybe half the brightness. And these are actually known for going bad after a while, so I guess it will soon be time. Or maybe I was just stupid and uh, I adjusted the brightness of the screen. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Ever since I got these suspension fitted with all the stiff tempers and springs, I hear a lot more rattles. And uh, that's basically what I'm trying to calm down and eliminate. That's the goal. As you can hear. I've actually just realized there is zero power going to the tailgate, which means I don't have license plate light, rear wiper, and that's probably why the boot is not opening. Well, um, yes, we have a situation. Um, switch this lock because it wasn't opening still and apparently it's either not getting power or I don't know but it's still not working yeah I should actually look what I'm filming uh, anyway the other lock because well, this car used to have an open bar rear windscreen as I probably have told you several thousand times but, so this lock, uh, this connector is for the lock for the openable rear windscreen, which is right here, right now. And, uh, well, this, this thing wasn't faultless either, because, as you can tell, it's uh, nasty looking right now, because we looped it up quite well, actually. This is what was making the most annoying noise in the whole car. Because uh, this lock, when the rear windshield is locked into it, it's moving around a little bit. And it's not moving uh, smoothly, the tongue of it is not moving smoothly. So then it's creating this really annoying rattling sound. So 
hopefully that will be solved by not a little bit but a lot of lube um, it's basically elbow this right also by the way this car is turning 18 this year so I guess it's time to take this well I completely forgot to record the process but uh, guess what yeah still nothing I can close the car the license pedal lights are on I think the rear wiper would be working if I tried but it's not opening it's not getting power so I will have to figure that out another day until then I guess I just won't open the boot well either way uh, it's half a success because the squeaking rattling bullshit sound this I made it's so far it's gone so that's good I hope it stays that way I'm not exactly sure it will but uh, at least the lock of the rear windscreen is not making any noise anymore so that's that I think that's probably going to be it for this video uh, there are more exciting things coming I have sort of a fun activity planned for this car it's a bit of brainstorming style um, well there's not much else to say so without further ado bye